Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to what will be the finale to Let's Play Resident Evil Remake. It's been a long and strenuous journey, and the last few episodes were kind of jank, but we've come to the end of our journey. This will be the finale, so it might be a longer episode. It just depends on how long it actually takes me to finish the game. So, we'll see. But last time, <clears throat> we came to the lab, y'all. We unlocked a bunch of doors, and we're going to go see what's behind those doors. If I can actually remember the order in which you want to go through some of these doors. Alright, I have inventory slots. The third MO disc should be in here. You need all three MO discs to get the best ending of the game. That's what we're going for. There's an aid spray. Yeah, the MO disc should be this back here. But I actually don't think there's anything else we can currently do in this room. Because we can't get in here. Oh, there's some shotgun shells. That we will open up in a little bit. We can, however, use this slide projector, if I can get over to it. View it. Yes. Umbrella. Bioorganic weapon official report. MA-39, Cerberus. F-103, Neptune. MA-121, Hunter. T-002, Tyrant. Bioorganic Weapons Research Group Development Staff. 83417-0623. So that barcode is actually something we need, but we need an item in order to finish that. So... <clears throat> Umbrella Bioorganic Weapons Research Group. There was a file we read earlier out in the mansion during our return um, that mentioned uh, BOWs and to lure stars to the mansion to get combat data for the BOWs. <clears throat> BOWs are exactly what... The, BOW is the acronym for Bioorganic Weapons. That's what we've been fighting. The Hunter, the Cerberus, the Neptune... They're all bioorganic weapons. They were created by the pharmaceutical company Umbrella. Now, I mentioned way back when that there is a difference between Cerberus and zombie dogs. Cerberus are potentially, or not potentially, they are... What's the word I'm looking for? Hold on, let me think. They are intentionally created. <laughs> I didn't know he was there. Cerberus are intentionally created a security system passcode transmission device. If you had an MO disk, you could transmit the passcode. Looks suspiciously like a GameCube, doesn't it? This is what we need the MO disk for. And it releases those locks. Leave those locks alone until you've released all three. I remember one time I went through on the GameCube version when this came out, and I did those, like, I released the lock, pushed the switch, released the lock, pushed the switch... And yeah, my game got, like, fucked up, and I couldn't get the ending. So, but before I continue, facts. To Sanitation Division. Attention, Manager of Sanitation from Raccoon Disaster Contingency Committee. The contents of this fax are confidential and intended for the named addressee only. Any copying or disclosure of the contents of this fax to any third party is strictly forbidden by the sender. After reading the contents of this fax, it must be destroyed immediately. We expect significant increase in the damage done by the recent T-virus outbreak than initially estimated. There are several concerns. First concern. <clears throat> More than half of the researchers have been infected by the T-virus and died. It has also been reported that almost all of the survivors of this accident are starting to show symptoms of T-virus infection. Second concern. Our, security sec our secret security patrol team has also been completely eradicated. Therefore, our most secret research is in danger of public disclosure. Quick actions are demanded to prevent mass media coverage. Third concern, there is a high possibility that most of the specimens are running loose inside the compound. We expect many casualties to follow. However, yet unfortunate, these casualties underscore the success of our research results. Actions must be taken to prevent our research results from being made public. We suspect the first official intervention intervention will come from the state police and STARS. We strongly recommend taking measures against them first. So yeah, shit didn't go the way Umbrella wanted it to, and now shit's popped off. Slide cartridge filter. Here's what we need. So, dirty lab coat. I don't care. So Cerberus are an intentional creation of the T-Virus by infecting dogs. Usually, in 90% of the games, Dobermans. 
with the T-virus. Zombie dogs are caused by secondary infection. So in Resident Evil 1, we have Cerberus. In other games, 90% of the time, they are zombie dogs. Neptune, that was an intentional creation. They infected a great white shark with the T-virus. Hunters are an intentional creation. They are the splicing of human and amphibian DNA. I think it's like splicing a... Is it a human egg with reptilian DNA or vice versa? One of the two. And then it also mentioned the tyrant. That's something we'll get into later. But yeah, we learn here that Umbrella fucked up. They did all this. So we use that slide reel. We look through this again. Cerberus, Neptune, Hunter, Tyrant. I wonder who that strapping young lad there in the sunglasses is. Hmm. And note now that a slide, that uh, the projection reel that we put in, it eliminated a bunch of numbers and we're left with 8462. You want to do is you want to come over to this keypad. Six. Opens up the wall. And inside we get the power room key. Well, it says laboratory key, but if we examine it, it'll turn into the power room key. Or power area, I think, is actually what it's called. Some sort of image editing equipment. Looks like you can use it to view Kenneth's film. Remember, we got that at the beginning of the game. Yes. What did we learn from that film? Well, we learned that Kenneth can't fucking shoot. What else did we learn from that film? That Kenneth is dead, but we already knew that, so we didn't really learn it. But he dead. Kenneth dead. Yeah, so... Umbrella, I mentioned, is the pharmaceutical company that basically runs Raccoon City. Remember, the mansion above us was owned by Oswald E. Spencer, though I don't think he's ever named in-game except for calling him Sir Spencer, but his name is Oswald E. Spencer. He is one of the three founders of Umbrella, the three founders being him, a colleague of his named James Marcus, and another colleague that I want to say is Oswald's friend, Alexander Ashford. James Marcus we'll learn more about when we play Resident Evil Zero, Alexander Ashford, we won't learn anything about until we play Code Veronica. But those are the three founders of the pharmaceutical company Umbrella. And here we have a save room, a much welcome one. Because I can get rid of these magnum bullets, and you get way more magnum bullets than I thought you did. Shit, I could almost run that motherfucker. Oh, damn! There's six more! Because hell... There are no zombies left. We're going to be fighting a new, slightly more terrifying enemy. And it's not the Hunters. It's an enemy I actually wish had more screen time. But we have this power room key. There are a couple of doors we can unlock with said key. With the key. Yes, the key. We ran past this door. This door is rusted shut. We cannot open it. All right, that's the last power room key door. Power room key door. Hmm. Wonder what that was. There it is again. Hmm. Wonder what that noise is. Hmm. That's probably nothing. We can move around these uh, operating rooms. There's that noise again. Hey, there's something in here with us. What is this thing? This is known as a chimera. It is a horribly grotesque creature that is created by splicing human and fly DNA. There's another one. And they are obnoxious shits. 
Now, if I remember correctly, they're actually the way they are created is impregnating a woman with a T virus spliced like fly embryo or some shit like that. It's actually really fucked up. Hold on. Uh, it's going to be one of these recording sessions again. So, yeah, the Chimera are actually pretty fucked up in terms of how they're created. So, we came out of. Climb up there, dumbass. So, we came out of that one. Let's go through this one. Alright, so that's just the other side. Okay. We want to go through the one at the back of the room. But yeah, the Chimera are going to be our enemy for the rest of the game. They don't get a lot of screen time. This is the only time you see them in the remake. In the original, they showed up earlier, but I think that might have only been in the director's cut. They have a habit of in a later zone. There's a terminal here for an ammo disc of popping out of the ceiling and they can grab you by the throat and they'll i want to say in this version they just simply strangle you in the original they decapitated you so that's the only thing we came in here for was to do that um use that mo disc because again if we want the best ending in the game we have to use all three mo discs shut up phone Nothing back there. All right, we gotta go this way now. So that was the only reason we went in there. Yeah, this is the only game Chimeras appear in. They're in Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles, which is an on-rail shooter retelling of, what, 0, 1, 3, plus some uh, unique scenarios, which I will play through. I will play through pretty much every game in the series that I easily can. Man, I really do like the Chimera. Alright! Here comes a f fun thing. Warning. Fuel may explode if shaken or jarred. Read the red text. A refueling device for the power room. It's not working right now because there's no fuel. There's an empty capsule. C. I thought this was deeper in. Alright, it's empty. But the primary ingredient of that fuel is nitroglycerin. What does nitroglycerin do? It explodes when it is agitated. Oh god! Why did I aim up? I need to kill him. I don't want him wandering around in here. Where are you? I really don't want him wandering around in here. But we're okay, so we gotta go fuel... We gotta, we gotta go fill up the capsule with the, with the fuel. That's what we gotta do. I know there's a chimera in here somewhere too. I think, or am I just? I might be just be tripping. But this is one of the reasons why I didn't want any crimson heads running around, or any really zombies or any enemies in general. Is this little thing we gotta do with the fuel? Because once we fill it up, we can't run. We can't take damage, and we can't shoot our gun, because it will cause a catastrophic explosion, and we will all die. And by we all, I mean Chris. But the refueling station is back in this room. It is this thing here. There seems to be something behind this dirty door. Open it, yes. It looks like a refueling device. Set the capsule? Yes. You got the fuel supply capsule. The main ingredient of the fuel appears to be nitro compound. Running could result in a fatal explosion. So don't run. We have to walk. You can't... Nothing. You can do nothing. Or you will explode. That's why I'm really worried about that, um... That chimera that kind of got away. I'm hoping he doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Well, yeah, where was I? Oh, so yeah, I will be playing pretty much every game. The ones that have co-op available, Umbrella Chronicles, Darkside Chronicles, RE5, RE6, Revelations 2, and I think that's it, will be played in co-op. <clears throat> I will probably also be playing through Operation Raccoon City, which will also be played in co-op. I will be playing it with my best friend. 
there will be several LPs on the channel that will feature him, whether in a dual commentary sense, in that one of us will be playing a game with the other one simply present, or co-op games, like uh, we've already been talking about doing Halo Combat Evolved from the Master Chief Collection, so that will probably be the first dual commentary LP we do. That will eventually include all of the Halo games, and we will be doing the same thing for Gears of War. Originally, oh god, please, that Chimera is around here somewhere. I should have fucking killed him. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay. Um... I was originally going to play RE2 after I beat RE1, and I was going to play the original RE2. The, uh, probably the DualShock, depending on, more than likely the DualShock, because it has some extra goodies. But, plans have changed, and I will probably be playing Zero next. Then, it will be RE2, the DualShock, RE3, and then more than likely Survivor, or one of those games in that sense. Bastard. But anyway, regardless of that, the next RE, the re next Resident Evil LP will be zero. Flash grenade back here. Yes. Hey. I remember one time I was playing this back on the GameCube, and every now and then I had an action replay. And every now and then, I would just, I would put on cheat codes and just play for the shits and giggles. And I was running around just using the Magnum. And the Magnum one-shots every normal enemy. And a Chimera jumped out of a vent, sprinted at me. Shit, I want to go back this way real quick. I can do this, but I want to make sure I do it now. A Chimera sprinted at me. I shot him in the head, and he continued to run. He climbed back up into the vent, climbed back out, and died. It was the most random thing. The last MO disc terminal is over here. Yeah. I love how these look like GameCubes. Because <clears throat> this game was originally meant to be GameCube exclusive. And it was up until... Shit. I want to say... Up until they re-released it. I want... Did they release it on PS3 and Xbox 360? It's been a GameCube exclusive up until recent years. Because it was all part of a deal that uh, Capcom had with Nintendo to release, I want to say it was five exclusive titles. There's no power to the main elevator. Start it up. Yes. So the main elevator is at the very back. Hey! Let me go. There you go. So yeah, they do that and they will strangle you. But I suck a grenade in his mouth, so he's now going to die. What the fuck? <laughs> But it was an exclusivity, an exclusive, exclusivity. It was a deal that Capcom had with Nintendo to release five exclusives for the GameCube, and I want to say those exclusives were Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil One, Resident Evil Four was one of them, and I honestly don't remember the other two. But I think it was five exclusive titles. I'll delve more into that in the bonus episode when I'm actually going to be prepared with those little tidbits because. I have decided that the bonus episode is going to be a Jill playthrough on my original clear data <clears throat> with me basically just to show off some of the differences and just to show off the costumes and a few other things. This is the main elevator, but before we go up there, we want to do something just to show off some stuff and the costumes and the differences in her game and the interactions with Barry. But it's going to be a Jill playthrough all basically chopped up. So. We're going to take the self-defense gun. It is the only thing we are taking. And remember, I told you this thing is as strong as six rounds from a Magnum. Six. You know what? Just in case I do something stupid, I am going to grab one more thing. But it's as strong as six Magnum rounds. It'll kill any enemy in the game, barring the final boss and Lisa Trevor any single shot. We're also just going to go ahead and take out Big Boomer. I really love the design of the Magnum in this game. I wish it showed up more. I also wish they would use the Desert Eagle more. 
this is the main elevator. It appears to be the control panel. Press the switch. C. The elevator is working. Chris. Hey. Rebecca. I saw you in the inner garden. I finally caught up. Well, I'm glad you're okay. No more following. Just stay with me, kid. That's my plan, sir. <laughs> thumbs up. I love that Rebecca continues to do thumbs up later on in... I wish they would have done more with Rebecca. She does show up. She's the main character in Zero alongside Billy Cohen. But she shows up again in Resident Evil Vendetta. And I wish she would have done more in that than just be the damsel in distress. Hey, look at all those shotgun shells that we're not going to take. Because <clears throat> we're literally, we have like, we have this and one more fight and we're done. Game's over. Game over, man. Game over. Wesker. So you've come. Chris, you make me proud. But of course you are one of my men. Thanks. Since when, Wesker? I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Since when have they been slipping you a paycheck? I think you're a bit confused. I've always been with Umbrella. Stars were umbrellas. No, rather, my little piggies. The Tyrant virus leaked, polluting this whole place, and unfortunately, I had to give up my lovely members of Stars. You killed them with your own dirty hands, you son of a bitch! No. Oh yes, dear. Just like this. Becca! Don't move. I don't think you want to die just yet. I have something that's of some interest to you. Ultimate life form. Tyrant. <laughs> Wesker, you've become senile. Chris, you'll never understand. It's magnificent. Ooh, Wesker! Freak. Watch out, he's coming right for us! Oh god, that didn't wait. That should have oh god. <laughs> that should have killed him. Uh-oh. We might have a problem. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, I lied. Apparently that doesn't kill him in one hit. <laughs> oh, so that's the tyrant. He damn near killed me because I wasn't expecting that. He is indeed done for. What a pathetic way to die. He's holding something. Observation note. The discovery of the G-Virus was in fact 21 years after the administration of the Prognitor virus. Prim... That's a typo. It should be Prognitor, not Primogen... Not Primogenter. It should be Prognitor virus. Anyway, the prototype parasite which we had delivered from a laboratory in France was administered to the sample specimen. The sample specimen took in the parasite without showing any signs of adverse reaction. The lack of any reaction was an unsolved mystery, but now everything is clear to me. But now everything is clear to me now. That's a weird... The prototype parasite was incubated in the sample specimen's body for 21 years. Then from that incubating state, the prototype suddenly mutated, evolved, maybe a more appropriate word to describe it. <clears throat> 
This observation gave me more insight in my research. Through further modification and testing, I was able to derive a method to create the G that surpasses the performance of the T. This was the breakthrough that would change the future of the BOW's history. I can't wait to see the look on Alexia's annoying face when I finally announce my research, but unfortunately, I'll have to wait a few more years to completely verify my findings. William Birkin. Now, the specimen he's talking about is Lisa Trevor. They experimented on her for, like I said, close to... Th hey, talk to Rebecca. I don't care. Talk to Rebecca. Rebecca! Chris. It's a good thing you were wearing your bulletproof vest. There's nothing left for us to do here. Let's get moving. Okay. So Lisa Trevor is the test subject they're talking about. They infected her with... I think I actually got to run around the corner real quick. They infected her with the prototype parasite they had shipped in from Europe. The parasite they're referring to is the NE-alpha parasite, the nemesis parasite. Panel used to release? Release, yes. So they injected her with this parasite, and it incubated in her body for 21 years. From that, the G virus was discovered. Now, G virus won't come become relevant until RE2. But because of what they did to Lisa Trevor, they were able to discover the G virus. Might have to pop a few caps off with the Magnum, but we're pretty much just going to run it from here on out because we're done. But also, I mean, come on. Did you really think Wesker wasn't the villain? Look at the guy. He's obviously the villain. Chris? What is it? I found a file in the lab. Apparently, there's still a lot of tyrant virus here. We should blow this whole place up. Right. The show must go on. I'll leave that up to you, Rebecca. I'm on it. I'll start the self-destruct system I found a little while ago. It's not like we're out of this yet. I'll see you on the outside. Outside. So also, while we're on that subject, let's talk about the tyrant. The thing that we just killed, the thing that killed Wesker. That is meant to be Umbrella's perfect life form. Tyrant is created by in by T-virus infection, but only one in like 10 million people have the genetic makeup in order to become a tyrant. So it's very, very rare to be able to become a tyrant. I need at least one free inventory slot. As you can see, we are gearing up for the end game. One in, yeah, I think it's like 10 million have a chance of becoming a tyrant. You also could see that there was more to the infection than the tyrant than just infecting with T-virus. They've done surgery to it. It's got the... There's a file that might be in the game. If it is, I've probably obviously missed it. Yeah, we have more than enough ammo, so I'm just going to go ahead and burn some of it on these guys if I had to. That actually gets into in-depth about the tyrant. If it's the file I actually think it is, it's Wesker's report. Which is a bonus file that is in... Um, I think only the Japanese version, but I will get into Wesker's report in the bonus episode. But the tyrant has... I think it has two hearts. It has its normal heart, and then... No, that's what it is. It has its heart, and then they grafted an animal's heart onto it to help with its... Uh, circulation and all that shit so we can only open this door once we release the electronic locks and the self-destruct has started but also notice that in the one in the slide projector we found the tyrant is labeled as t002 there is more spoilers than one tyrant I actually think, no, once we released those locks, we could have come down here because we could have talked to Jill. I totally skipped that. So yeah, this is where Jill is. Jill? Chris! 
You're okay. Chris, it's Wesker. He... I know. But first, let's get out of here. So yeah, you can come down here earlier and talk. I totally forgot about that. You get some dialogue where it's basically the same thing, and Chris is like, well, I'll save you. And notice that Jill now has a handgun. Explain to me how, because we have her samurai edge. Where did she get that one from? Magic. Unless she has Chris's. So we've rescued Jill. She was down there the whole time. So yeah. But yeah, spoilers, there's more than one tyrant. Let's get going. Ah, there's quite a few actually. <laughs> but that one was T002. We will end up meeting another one in pretty much every game before four. There's a tyrant in every game before four. Basically, yeah, there is. And I'm looking forward to it. Now I bet you're wondering, well, where the hell do you gotta go from here? I'll show you where you gotta go. Yeah, definitely. Bonus episode, I will get into Wesker's report and a bunch of other stuff. I should save it because I I should but you know what I'm going balls to the wall on this bet you didn't realize this was a big ass fucking cargo door cargo door it's a big ass door is what it is and we get a bunch of shit here the only thing there's ammo and healing items I should I need one free inventory slot, so I'm not, I should have enough healing items. This is the battery, right? Because I need to pick it up first. Yes, this is the fuse, all right. So we need the fuse, the elevator. Self-destruct systems activated. Really? Good Hadn't work. noticed. Brad's up in the helicopter. Those things are coming. I'll take care of them. But Chris, you just get in contact with Brad somehow. Okay. So now the girls get to go have girl time and go kill uh, monsters. While we go try to contact the chicken shit bastard that left us here. Damn you, Brad. And we have three minutes to do so. Will you take the conveniently placed signal rockets? Yep. And the girls are back. All right, time to get the hell out of here. Drinks are on me when we get back. You okay? Yeah. You didn't really think that was the end of the tyrant, did you? And notice, he's different. He's a hell of a lot more aggressive. That claw is bigger. That is actually a product of the T-Virus. It, it basically, once it lies dormant, ha, for yada yada, oh no, 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 no. Oh, thank God for speed loaders. Once it lies dormant for long enough, Chris, use it. this is bullshit. What fucking police unit has a goddamn rocket launcher? This is bullshit. No, 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 no. So I bet you're wondering, why aren't you using the rocket launcher? Well, I'll tell you. The tyrant 
being the asshole he is. Is he gonna do it? Nope. <laughs> if he doesn't have enough damage done to him, he'll deflect the rocket. Fucking what police unit has a goddamn rocket launcher? It's such bullshit. All right, everyone, so that's it. That's the end. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me on this adventure. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, if you liked what you saw, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, all that fun stuff. A lot more games to come on the channel. A lot more stuff to come. A bonus episode for this. I've still got to finish up Save the Light. Got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing here. So just remember, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. I also want to give a shout out to two YouTubers. Uh, first is Scribe D. He was the first YouTuber that I really got into watching his, I want to say it was his Dark Souls playthrough back when he first started it. He was the first real inspiration for me to want to start a YouTube channel. I love his style of commentary. He's... I think overall, I mean, obviously I've never met him or anything like that, but I, overall I think he's a good person. He was the first big inspiration. The other one is Al Chestbreach. He is a YouTuber that mainly does Fallout New Vegas stuff. He is a fantastic, goofy, goofy son of a bitch. And I like him for so many reasons, and I like Scribe for so many others. I'm going to link their channels in the description. Please check them out. Um... What else? So, yeah, bonus episode for this LP. Uh, Steven Universe Save the Light. Going to be finishing that up soon. Going to be doing Days Gone as a blind LP. Got a few more little projects. Hey, Tokyo Marui. I told you about them earlier. Also, you're seeing some stuff that happens in Jill's game. You'll get to see it all. Because, again, Shinji Mikami. We will be, uh, bonus episode will be a Jill playthrough, more or less. So yeah, again, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you stick around, and we can have some fun. Chris, you did a fine job. Ooh. Oh, that hurts my pride. Oh, it took me five hours. Oh, God. My pride. Oh. Because you have to beat it in, like, three and a half, I think, for the rocket launcher, and four for the Samurai Edge. Well, Barry Samurai Edge. Oh. Oh my god, my pride. Oh, Jesus. Oh man, that kills me that that took me that long. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know I did, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy, and have a good one.